Hello and welcome. This is the Expertly German podcast, the podcast to learn German. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zum Expertly German Podcast, dem Podcast zum Deutschlernen. Das Sprichwort des Tages lautet, alle Wege führen nach Rom. So the saying of the day is, alle Wege führen nach Rom. All roads lead to Rome. Und das bedeutet sowas wie, alle Möglichkeiten führen zum Ziel. Kind of means something like, all possibilities lead to the goal. Well, And to say that in German, we would say, alle Wege führen nach Rom, all ways or roads lead to Rome. And today's episode, we start again with a grammar session, with an exercise about the topic passiv, the passive. So I'm going to tell you some sentence in the active, and then you have to translate it into the passive. A bit of a challenge here, but you know, we like challenges in this podcast. I hope uh, this will also make you understand the passive a little bit more. And then in the second part, we are doing news. I will say the news in German and translate the sentence into English. Okay, so buckle up. Let's start with the passive. Okay, so here are, what do I have? Five sentences. And I'm going to tell you a sentence in the normal way in the active. And you have to figure out a way how to translate it into the passive. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's just learning by doing. Let's just go into it. Tom bringt die Briefe zurück. Tom bringt die Briefe zurück. So that means Tom is bringing back the letters. How would you say this sentence in the passive? So what do I mean by passive? In passive, we don't know or don't care uh, or something or don't want to say who is doing the action. So we just say something like the letters are being brought back here actually in the present tense. So the sentence in the passive would be die Briefe werden zurückgebracht. Zurückgebracht as one word. Die Briefe werden zurückgebracht. Yes, so here we don't have the situation that Tom is in the sentence and he is doing uh, the action. He is bringing back the letters. No, we just say, die Briefe werden zurückgebracht. Okay, let's try this with another sentence. I say it again in the active and you have to tell me what it would be in the passive. Die Kinder tragen den schweren Schrank. Die Kinder tragen den schweren Schrank. The children are carrying the uh, heavy, uh, what is it, closet. Okay, so you have to tell me, how can I say the sentence without using the children? And whilst you think, let me tell you that When I speak German, I actually use the passive quite often. Um, and also, you know, with some clients, we are reading articles and we go through articles and we realize all the time that the articles are written oftentimes in the passive or at least some sentences are written in the passive. So it is really quite useful also in business German or just not business German, but, you know, like working in the office and so on. Uh, so so you don't want to say, okay, like Tom is doing this or Tom should do this. You just say, this needs to be done, something like that. Okay, now I talked enough. And the answer of die Kinder tragen den schweren Schrank would be, der schwere Schrank wird getragen. Okay, so you already probably see a pattern here. We have werden in its conjugated form in the second position and then we have a past participle at the end. Der schwere Schrank wird, conjugated verb here, werden, ja, der Schrank wird, er wird. And then getragen comes just from tragen and then the past participle or partizip 2 is then getragen. Okay, let's do this with another sentence. Der Buchhalter hilft dem Unternehmen. Der Buchhalter hilft dem Unternehmen.
Okay, and here the answer would be, dem Unternehmen wird geholfen. So helfen is a dative verb, that's why dem Unternehmen wird geholfen. And so the past participle of helfen is geholfen, with an O. Okay, so the fourth one, in Berlin trinkt man viel Mate Tee. Well, I, at least that's what I feel like people are doing in Berlin. Um, so in Berlin, uh, one drinks a lot of uh, uh, Mate Tee. In Berlin trinkt man viel Mate Tee. How would you say this in the passive? And the answer would be, viel Mate Tee wird in Berlin getrunken. Viel Mate Tee wird in Berlin getrunken. So here, wird again and uh, then getrunken, the past participle. You could also say, in Berlin wird viel Mate Tee getrunken. Man muss das Fahrrad reparieren. That's the last sentence. And that's actually quite difficult because there's some special thing here. Man muss das Fahrrad reparieren. So one has to repair the bicycle. You could also obviously say like Tom muss das Fahrrad reparieren or whatever. Er muss das Fahrrad reparieren. I just use man here. Uh, just I could have also used something else. But how would I say this sentence in the passive, in passive? And the answer would be, das Fahrrad muss repariert werden. So the reason why this was a bit more difficult is because we have a modal verb, a modal verb, müssen. And so here we have the modal verb, müssen, in its conjugated form. Then we have the repariert, with it, which is actually the past participle, just because it's an ihren verb. Uh, like trainieren, reparieren, studieren, those verbs, they don't get a GE in its uh, past participle form. And then in the end, we have a werden. So das Fahrrad muss repariert werden. So this is how we structure the sentences in the passive, when it's the present tense, using a modal verb, a modal verb. Before we continue with the episode, just a little reminder, you can find the transcript of the podcast in the show notes below. Also, I just launched a 10-week program that teaches you German. There are two programs available, one for A1 levels and one for A2 to B1 level. And the good thing about this program is that I will send you material, videos, homework and quizzes throughout the week. When you join the program and then in the weekly group session we will discuss the topic that i've sent you per email so this is a great way to learn by yourself and also to learn it with others and with me and practice speaking but also learning the grammar at your own pace i think this is really valuable for people who kind of want to emerge themselves more into the german language in various ways and the program is also priced pretty well so go to my website expertlygerman.com and click on 10 week program so now we come to the second part of the lesson which is the news in german again i'm gonna say the news in german and then i will translate the sentence into english let's start with the first topic was tun gegen steigende mieten what can be done against rising rents Olaf Scholz, SPD-Kanzlerkandidat, versprach 400.000 neue Wohnungen in Deutschland pro Jahr. Olaf Scholz, the SPD-Candidate for Chancellor, promised 400.000 new apartments in Germany per year. Man muss die Städte und Gemeinden stärken. Gelder in die Hand nehmen und die Bauung der neuen Wohnungen fördern. You have to, or one has to, strengthen the cities and municipalities, take the money in hand and promote the construction of new apartments. 
In den Sondierungspapieren wird der Bau von 400.000 neuen Wohnungen noch immer angepeilt. The construction of 400.000 new apartments is still targeted in the exploratory papers. Möglicherweise hat der vom Bundesverfassungsgericht gekippte Mietendeckel in Berlin die Politiker abgeschreckt. The rent cap in Berlin that was tipped by the Federal Constitutional Court may have deterred politicians. Like deterred ist hier abschrecken oder abgeschreckt. Man hat versucht, einen Anstieg der Mieten zu verhindern. Das hat aber auch nur dazu geführt, dass die zur Vermietung angebotenen Wohnungen stark sanken. Okay, let me maybe read the sentence again. Man hat versucht, einen Anstieg der Mieten zu verhindern. So that means attempts have been made to prevent rents from rising, ja, verhindern, to prevent. Das hat aber nur dazu geführt, dass die zur Vermietung angebotenen Wohnungen stark sanken. But this has only resulted in the number of apartments available for rent falling sharply. Profitiert haben davon also nur die Bestandsmieter. So only the existing tenants um, benefited from this. Neue Wohnungen entstanden durch den Mietendeckel nicht. The rent cap did not create new apartments. Cool, all right. Second news topic. Entbürokratisierung gefordert. So that's kind of like debürokratisation called for. Something like that. Die Immobilienwirtschaft wünscht sich eine gründliche Entbürokratisierung. The real estate industry, ja, Immobilienwirtschaft, the real estate industry wants a thorough reduction in bureaucracy. Ja, reduction in bureaucracy is also a way to say Entbürokratisierung. Durch die langen Genehmigungsverfahren zieht sich vieles und unnötige Kosten entstehen. So something like because of the long approval process, a lot of things are prolonged and unnecessary costs uh, are being created. Auch muss eine flächendeckende Digitalisierung in den Bauämtern her. So an area-wide digitization must also be achieved in the building authorities. So Bauämter, das Bauamt, die Bauämter, and then here in den Bauämtern is the dative, uh, that's the building authorities, yeah, the Ministry for Building Construction stuff. Man versucht generell die Rahmenbedingungen für das Bauen zu verbessern. So they or one also tries to generally improve the conditions for a building. Next news topic. Home office könnte Erwerbswelt spalten. Working from home could divide the world of work. So die Erwerbswelt is here the world of work. It's actually quite a German word. I, I don't know where, how else to translate that. Es wird vor einer Spaltung der Arbeitswelt gewarnt. Homeoffice könnte nämlich in Kürze wieder Pflicht werden. So it is warned against the split in the world of work, or Arbeitswelt oder Erwerbswelt. And then Homeoffice could soon become mandatory again. Ja, also in Kürze wieder Pflicht werden. So in, in soon, in short, or like shortly, uh, wie der Pflicht, like again mandatory. Das Potenzial für Homeoffice in Deutschland ist laut Oliver Falk sehr hoch. According to Oliver Falk, the potential for home offices in Germany is very high. Momentan arbeiten etwa 20% im Homeoffice. 
So at the moment, or currently, around 20% work in the home office. Es soll gefördert werden, etwa durch steuerliche Anreize, die Subventionen von Endgeräten und vor allem den Breitbandausbau. So it should be promoted, for example through tax incentives, ja, steuerliche Anreize, subsidies for end devices, ja, Subventionen von Endgeräten, and above all broadband expansion, ja, so und vor allem den Breitbandausbau. And now the last news topic, Problem, mangelhafte digitale Infrastruktur. So, Problem, inadequate digital infrastructure. Die mangelhafte Infrastruktur sei ein klarer Standortnachteil. So, the inadequate infrastructure is a clear disadvantage for the location. The sei here is the Konjunktiv, ja, the Konjunktiv 1. Mitarbeiter, die auf dem Land wohnen, haben keine Chance, im Homeoffice mitzuhalten und können von zu Hause aus nicht richtig arbeiten, da das Internet einfach zu schlecht ist. Employees who live in rural areas kind of have no chance to keep up in the home office or can work properly from home because the Internet is simply too bad or too slow. Okay, so those were the four news topics today. Again, I hope you learned something about the passive. Um, there are also some episodes that I have done on that topic in the past. So maybe just uh, scroll through the feed a little bit and, and find the episode that uh, is on that topic as well. Cool. So again, I'm offering a 10-week program. Uh, you can find everything in the show notes. I also offer private lesson. So you can book those through my website, expertlygerman.com. Also, I want to mention that sometimes companies approach me which need kind of like tailored group lessons. So if you know any company uh, which would be interested in group lessons, then just email me at tom at expertlygerman.com or just book a 15-minute call via my website. Uh, and then I can provide the company a quote. Cool. Thank you very much for listening and learning. Vielen herzlichen Dank, dass ihr heute meinem Podcast zugehört habt. Ich wünsche euch einen großartigen Start in die Woche. Cheers und bis bald.